By far, the most prestigious name in shooters on the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive is Toa Plan. With games like Truxton, Grindstormer, and Zero Wing, they have definitely made a name for themselves on Sega's 16-bit system. However, many of Toa Plan's Genesis titles have also made their way to the PC Engine CD-ROM 2 in Japan as well. One title in particular is Hellfire, released in 1990 on the Mega Drive and Genesis, and 1991 on the CD-ROM 2 as Hellfire S. Hellfire distinguishes itself from the other shooters of its time with various fire patterns which can be cycled through to attack enemies in front and behind, above and below, and in a diagonal X pattern, all of which can be powered up. But there are some big differences between the two. Which one will come out on top? Bullet Heaven HD presents our first ever dual review on Hellfire and Hellfire S by Toplan. If you love the Hellfire arcade game from 1989, then the Genesis had you covered the very next year. It features all six levels of the arcade original, with very close sound. Sounds great, right? Well, that's pretty much where the similarities end. Hellfire on the Genesis offers an extra bomb attack not found in the arcade version, and a handy drone that helps take out enemies and, at times, absorbs their attacks. If this sounds awesome, well, you're wrong. This is an utter train wreck of a game conversion. Now, this might sound harsh, but hear me out. First off, the graphics are rather plain, which is understandable. Most arcade conversions suffered in terms of graphical fidelity and sound quality. Though as stated before, this version's sound is very close. However, there are far worse things going on in the Genesis version. For example, the two-player mode is completely AWOL from this version. That might seem like a bit of a double standard. After all, UN Squadron on the Super NES dropped its two-player mode and ended up being better than its arcade father. It even got a perfect score. However, the difference here is that the difficulty has also been ratcheted up to unnecessary levels, which is my next point. Not only is stuff whizzing around at high speed, but your ship starts off far too sluggish. Pick up more than two speed power-ups and you're being flung around the screen at light speed, at the mere twitch of a button. As you might expect, you'd find yourself dying quite a bit, and this brings us to the worst thing that this version of Hellfire has, that no other does. Checkpoints. Oh, you died? Not only do you lose every power-up you've gained, but you're starting back at a checkpoint. But it's even worse than that! If you die straight off, which is entirely possible given that you come back to the game, crippled with base firepower and sluggish mobility, you are sent back to the PREVIOUS checkpoint, to the one that you started at. And that is just ridiculous, it seriously is. Oh, but it doesn't end there. Depending what model Genesis you have, Hellfire might not function properly. I use the Genesis CDX as my default Genesis. However, the music only plays back at half the speed that it should. This also happens with the most common unit, the Model 2. It seems that Hellfire only properly runs on a Model 1 Genesis, which makes me think that it was ported in such a way that only the original Genesis specs would do. Bizarre! So I'm sure you can all tell I'm not especially impressed with Hellfire on the Genesis, and as such, I was very apprehensive about its CD counterpart Hellfire S on the PC Engine CD-ROM 2.
Instantly, Hellfire S makes a better case for the game as a whole. It sports animated story scenes, bright, detailed visuals, and boasts CD-quality Redbook audio. It's not just better in its presentation, though. The gameplay is much better balanced and feels less slippery overall, even after collecting speed power-ups to the max. Your shots are also more powerful overall, which balances out the lack of a bomb attack and drone helper. But then, who needs a drone helper when you can have access to the two-player co-op play that was axed from the Genesis version? Granted, you need to have a multi-tap since the PC Engine only has one controller port, but anyone who wanted to play two-player games on the PC Engine had one anyway. Hellfire S also includes the six stages from the arcade version and manages to maintain the original look of the arcade's visuals as well, which all told trumped the Genesis version even at a glance, with better color and detail. However, there is a lack of parallax scrolling, which makes the background seem a little flat, despite being more detailed. This is typical of most CD System 2 games, and was addressed and sold as a major selling point of the Super CD System 3 add-on. But it doesn't affect the gameplay, and it remains just as quick as the arcade version, if not quicker. The sound is much more tolerable as well, even if Hellfire cheats a bit with high-quality arrangements of the soundtrack. But then, this was one area that the PC Engine CD-ROM 2 always excelled at compared to everything else up until the Sega CD did the same thing four years later. And finally, there are the numerous story sequences between the levels and in the intro and ending. Hellfire S introduces actual characters to the mix. The blonde-haired Kaoru pilots the red ship, and the blue-haired Yu pilots the blue ship. This is something unique to Hellfire S, but of course, since it's entirely in Japanese, a lot of players will be in the dark about the story if they don't know the language. Translation guides are probably available somewhere out there, though. So then, how do these two games stack up to each other? Let's get the battle underway! Now I know I'm going to take a lot of heat from this, especially from fans, but there's a reason this gets a 2 for control. The Genesis version's control is so unforgiving you'll find yourself flying into everything on the screen. And if you want the biggest points for the fastest extends, you got to pick up all of the speed power-ups. So as you can imagine, this is a bit of a problem, for the Genesis version anyways. The CD-ROM 2 version handles rather well even with full speed. In terms of length, both games are equal, with 6 full stages. These stages are actually quite long as well, so there's plenty to play through. The challenge balance is iffy for both games. The Genesis version is needlessly hard with pointless checkpoints that didn't even exist in the arcade version. This makes the Genesis version obnoxiously hard. The difficulty is much more balanced on the CD-ROM 2 system, although some of the boss fights can be over in just a few seconds with a fully powered ship. The visuals are much closer to the arcade version on the CD-ROM 2 system than on the Genesis, and in terms of sound, although the Genesis is a lot closer to the arcade version, the CD-ROM 2 has Redbook audio, making it sound really, really nice. Now on the ingenuity front, the Genesis version loses points for introducing stuff that was completely unnecessary. I'm looking at you, you f***ing checkpoints! Never mind, they took out features that would have actually heightened the score, like, I don't know, two-player? The CD-ROM 2 system, however, has the advantage of having two-player and the ability to continue playing with a new ship spawning on screen without stopping. So, pound for pound, you have to go with the CD-ROM 2 system. It's just a much better balanced, more fun, and overall better game to play. As for the Genesis version, I'm so unimpressed by it that I can't recommend it at all. You can get the PC Engine CD-ROM 2 version for about 20 bucks at auction. Or, if you want to punish yourself with the Genesis version, you can get it from anywhere from $16 to $25, depending on completeness. 